year started. What a way to get it started. The first day of the year to gather together as a church here this morning. I mean, there's not a better way to get it started than doing this right here. Come out and worship the Lord. Amen. We're so thankful for everybody that's come out. If it's your first time coming out, we're glad that you're here with us. And we want you to feel right at home. Feel right at home to worship and praise the Lord right along with everybody else that's in the house. And so thankful for what happened through the year last year, you know, but last year's behind us. We've seen people get baptized. We've seen people come to the Lord. We've seen people delivered. We've seen a church got started and from the foundations. The walls are up. The roof is on, and that's moving, you know, moving forward and all of that. But even more excited about what's going to happen this year. Amen. Because yeah. this year, boy, it'd just be nice if we could just get in that thing this year. Oh, you yeah. Know? That'd be awesome when we get to have service down there in the new church, but it's still the same God. We're just going to move to the other end of town is all we're going to do. But so thankful we got a baptizing today. Um, I mean, did you say, Pastor, four? Three or four? Three or four is going to be baptized today. Uh, so, hey, we're getting the new year started off right, you know. Hey. <coughs> Overlook me on that. I won't be singing any. She said, she said I couldn't sing none today. I'm too hoarse. Next time. Maybe next time. Tell me there's a chance. <laughs> this morning as we get ready to take up this morning's offering and let's just get this day started off real good. We want to look to the Lord and worship and praise his holy name as we go to him in prayer. Brother Tyler, Brother Dave, you help out with the, with the offering this morning. Pastor, yes. take us into this new year with prayer. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you today for your blessings. We thank you for another year. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of the past year, but we look forward to what you're going to do for us in this new year, in 2023. Pray you bless today as we give into the kingdom of God, because we know, Father, the kingdom is built by our gifts. And so we pray today that you would bless the hand as we give, as we build your kingdom. That's what, that's what our goal is, we build, Father. We pray you bless the, those that's giving today, those that are able, able to. We pray you bless them, Father, that we can give to your kingdom. Bless this service. Let your spirit have his liberty in this house and have his way on this new year. A brand new day, a brand new year. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
He's the best friend. He sticks closer than a brother. He's a deliverer in the midnight hour. He's my healer. He's my redeemer. He's my dearest friend. He's my savior. and we're nowhere near. The only thing I can vision is souls being saved. Lives being changed. Building the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Amen. I'm so excited that you are here today. We are honored that you've chosen to come worship the Lord with us on the year 2023. Now, I know it's very difficult to get to learn to write that, especially on your checkbooks. You're like me, you're still right, I'm still right in 2019. Amen. But uh, 2023, that seems like when I was a kid, that seemed like something that you would watch on a science fiction movie and that you would never, I'd never see that. But I'm so thankful to be here in, in Whitley City, in McCurry County, Hope City, in the year 2023, January 1, 2023. And I, my hope and my prayer is that your family is saved this year. It's my hope and my prayer. My hope and my prayer is that, that homes are restored this year. That lives are renewed this year. That relationships are restored this year. That is my hope and my prayer for you for this year. And I am just so excited about what God is doing. 
I'm so excited about what he's doing today. We have a baptism day. Pastor Sean's going to be doing that. And we're just so excited about the kingdom of God. I have a word for you this morning. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I need a clean slate. I need a clean slate. Oh, isn't this good? I need a clean slate. I'm going to be reading this morning from the book of Philippians, chapter number 3. And while you're turning there, let's, let me say once again, I'm just appreciative of you today. I really thank you. I thank you for being here. I thank you for taking the time to come and be here today. I want you to encourage other people to come to be with us at at Hope City Church. We want to love you, but Brother Dave is calling the phrase, it's a great place to be loved, and it's kind of the model on our, our Facebook and different things. We want, we want to love on you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Let me, let me, let me, let me throw this in my message, but let me just throw this in here. Yeah, I don't care what, what sin you've been in. I really don't care. I'm not, I'm not being, you know... Uh, uh, hard hearted or anything it doesn't matter Jesus can make you new yeah. now he doesn't make us new for us to go back to the pig pen come on oh, boy that preach he doesn't make us new to go water in the mud again and then come back and let him make us new again and then go walk we do that occasionally but we, we need to fix that ourselves amen and when I say ourselves Focus on the things of God. If you have your Bibles in Philippians chapter number 3, say praise the Lord. Praise Amen. I want to go to verse number 13. And before I read this, I just want to lay you a little groundwork. Paul is talking to the church of Philippi. And Paul is explaining to them about uh, the saving grace of Christ. About how we come out from the law. And these, these are just some of the, the little hidden gems that Paul is saying. That, that it's not simply because of who I am and what my name is and where I'm from. Uh, can I tell you today that, that God is no respecter of person. If he, can, if he can use, and I read a list here a few weeks ago, if he can use David, who David was a murderer, and if he can use David, and if he can use Paul, and if he can use Peter, who was a liar, and if he can use all of those men and even women throughout the Scripture, and he can use it, he can use you also. See, a lot of things... I, man, I'm telling you, the Spirit's been wind running around me since about 4 o'clock this morning. I'm telling you right now, the biggest lie that the enemy has ever told you, you standing there today, maybe you've come out of addiction, but the biggest lie the enemy has ever told you is that you're no good. That you're not worthy. Come on now. See, let me, let me preach to you. Uh, none of us are worthy. I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm a son of a pastor. His dad was a pastor. The, pa the, the father before him was a pastor. But that doesn't make me any more worthy than anybody else. I've got to step under the spout when the glory comes out, just like you do. And it's because of God. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of who I am, but it's because of who He is. See, that's a lie the enemy has told us throughout. And, 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 and churches. Man, I'll tell you what. I hate religion. Religion tells you that you've got to be so-so and you, got, you can't have the marks on your, on your past in order for God to move on you. That's junk. God's the one that calls. It ain't me. It's a good thing I ain't God. I'm telling you. Go to Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. i got to read before I get carried away. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Paul said, Brethren, I count myself not to apprehend it, but this one thing I do. Now, notice what Paul says. Let me kind of put that in Kentucky terms. Paul says, I ain't, I ain't got it all. I ain't finished it. I don't have a clue. But there's one, the main important thing. Somebody look at your name and say, this is an important thing. Paul says that the, the main thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. Come on. I'm giving this a little pause for dramatic effect. <laughs> forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
Let us therefore, as many be perfect, be thus minded, be minded in the forgetting, and if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereunto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, and let us mind the same thing. All right, then we're, we're going to do something right here. I want, I want you to turn around and look behind you. Now, you ain't looking at the person behind you. You're looking at yesterday. You're looking at this past year, 2022, 2021, 2020, something that happened 10 years ago, and saying, I'm leaving you. I'm forgetting you. I'm walking off. You're no longer part of my life. And I'm going forward. Turn around and look at your neighbor and say, I need a clean slate. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. I need a clean slate. I begin to think about New Year's. Hallelujah. New Year, here we are in the year and I just died. That's okay. Here we are. There we are. I'm back again. Woo, hallelujah. Here we are in the, in the year 2023. And, and many people, many of you have made New Year's. I had a person ask me yesterday or last night, said, what is your New Year's resolution? And many people make New Year's resolution. And I've done a little research on this this past week. And the, most, the top two common things for New Year's resolutions are this. Exercise and eat less. Somebody say Exercise. Somebody say eat less. Now here's the problem with that. We have good intentions. Oh, I'm going to stay away from all that sugary, snacky stuff. And I'm going to leave little Debbie on the shelf. And I'm not taking her home with me. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to start walking every day. And I'm going to start it. I'm going to get me a gym membership. I'm going to get me a treadmill so I can hang my clothes on it here in a few days. Oh, I'm preaching now. I'm going I'm to exercise. I'm going to do better. And you'll, you'll do really good January 1st and January 2nd and January 3rd. But by February 2nd, you're pigging out. <laughs> and you're supposed to be walking in. So I told my friend on the phone last night when she asked me, she said, what's your... I said, I'm not going to lie to myself. I'm going to eat more and do less. For the year 2023. I'm going to eat like there's no tomorrow. And I ain't going to walk unless I have to. I ain't buying no bicycle if it ain't got a motor on it. I don't want it. Now, there ain't no sense of lying about it. See, that's what we, we make these resolutions about what we're going to do. And we're not going to do this, and we're not going to do that. And we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna be a, we're gonna eat better, and we're going to exercise. And we're gonna, but I want to I wanna talk about some real life things. I want to talk about some things for a few minutes this morning. If you'll give me about 10, 15 minutes. I want to talk about some things that affect you mentally, spiritually, and physically. This is kind of where the Lord directed me. I want to talk to you today about some things that, that, that hold us down in the spirit realm. Now let me, let me preach to you. The devil, you know, I know the devil don't want to say, but if you are saved, the devil sure don't want you doing anything for the kingdom of God. If you're saved, he just wants you to sit at the house. He don't want you lifting your hands. He don't want you coming to the house of God. He wants you to think that, well, I can, I can stay saved at home. Let me tell you, I, one of the main things that I want to do is I want to be more faithful to the house of God. I want to be more faithful to the call of God. I want to be more faithful to the building of the kingdom of God. The enemy, he, if, if he can just discourage you, if he can just discourage you. If he can just slow you down. If he can just disrupt you a little bit. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, I need a clean slate. See, the battlefield of our, our, our war with the enemy is in our mind. Somebody looked at your neighbor and said, it's between your ears. Now, for some of you, that's a big vacant spot. I won't say who, but you're sitting up close to the front on one side. It's a, it ain't on this side. And it's from that pew back. 
and from that way this way. <laughs> See, we we our our battlefield goes on in our mind. Have you had a battle with the enemy in your mind this week? Maybe even today. You're not worthy. You're not worthy. Look what you've done. Look where you've been. You were a drug addict. You were you were you were a, you, you were a prostitute. You you were a drunkard. You cheated on your spouse. You done this. You you lied. You lied. You 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 done. And he will constantly remind you of what you have done. Come on. Am I alone in this? He'll constantly remind you of your failures, and we've all got them. He'll constantly remind you of your shortcomings or your misgivings uh, that are in your life. The enemy will do that. But Paul said, in the, in the Paul talking, in, in, the, in the text that we read to you today, Paul said, uh, this, there's one thing that I want you to understand. You need to forget those things that are behind you. See, this is the first thing I want to talk about today. The first thing I want you to do for the year 2023, I want you to commit to, to, into yourself to forget your failures. Forget them. You can't do anything to change them. You can't do anything to fix them. You can't do anything to amend them. You can't do anything to wipe them out of your past. So what you do is you forget them in your past. What you do is you tell the enemy, yeah, I know I made mistakes. Yeah, I know I have failed. Yeah, I know I have done this. I know I have done that. But it really doesn't matter what I have done. It matters what I am today. And what is a blood child of God. What I am today is forgiven for my adultery, forgiven for my drunkenness, forgiven for my prostitution, forgiven for my drug addiction, forgiven for my past, forgiven for my mistakes, forgiven for my lies, forgiven for everything I've ever done. It's been washed in the mud. It's been made brand new. I'm no longer that old person. In Christ Jesus, He has made me new. Woo. Somebody say I'm new. Say I got a clean slate. Ooh. Clean slates are awesome. Clean slates. I said clean slates are awesome. See, number one, we need to commit ourselves. To forgetting our failures. Trust me, I have failed. I have failed miserably in my life. And trust me, the enemy wants to bring it. I ain't worried about people bringing it up. Right? I'm going to tell you something right now that's really going to shock you. I don't care what people think. I love it. The older you get, the better you get toward this. I don't care what other pastors think of me. I don't care what organizations think of me. I ain't trying to impress anybody. I ain't, I ain't trying to move up no ladder. I ain't trying to get in their pocket and make them give me money because I don't need their money. Somebody help me now. And I ain't saying that because I got a bunch of money. I'm just saying I don't need what you got. The only thing I need is Jesus. The only thing I need is the blood of the Lamb. The only thing I need is the promise of His Word. That's all I need. See, I have come to the conclusion in my life what people think about me does not motivate me. It don't, it don't motivate. And you might say, preacher, you, you need to be like, I don't care if people like me or not. I just want to be in the will of God. I just want to be in the center of His purpose. I just want to be in the center of His will. I just want to be built in the kingdom. Now, I'm not going to be mean about it. I'm not. But for a long time, I, I really really concerned me what people thought, thought about me. Oh, Lord, they need to like me. I need to talk this way. And I, and I did, can I tell you something right now? That's too much work. You either like me or you don't. 
But here's the problem. I didn't care what other people thought. But I cared what I thought about myself. A much that I could not forget where I'd made mistakes. Let me tell you something. One of the most liberating things that you can ever do in your life. I'm, not, I'm, I'm, tell, I'm helping somebody right now. I feel it in the spirit, Pastor Isaiah. One of the most liberating things you can ever do in your life. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself of your past. Forgive yourself of your short time. See, we want to move to 2023, and the number one key to get to moving in 2023 is forgetting your past. Somebody say, forget your past. Oh, I got to hurry. I got five minutes. Forgetting your past. Don't hold me to that, would you please? Forgetting your past. Number two. Number two. I mean, I'm, I'm just jumping through my notes. Number two. I'm going to forget my past. But number two, I'm going to commit myself to forgiving grudges. Amen. Preacher, but you don't know what they said about me. My daddy used to have this saying, and I loved it, and I use it today. Of course, it's old time, and some of you won't get it, some of you will, but just the way his terminology. And I, I told him one day, I said, Dad, I said, I don't know if them people like you or not. And he's like, well, I really don't care if they do or not. I said, well, I think, that, I think, he said, he said, we've had problems in the past. He said, but I've forgiven them, and I've got over it, and they ain't in my pocketbook. In other words, they ain't taking nothing from me. And then he said, but here's, here's son, he said, let me tell you something. He said, the worst thing that gets in your pocketbook is when you don't forgive them. Mm. <laughs> Somebody with me today. When, when we carry and hold on to things of the past. See, I, I, I want you to listen to these words that come from the book of Colossians. Because in them, you're going to hear of the, of the second challenge, of the second thing. You're going to hear what I think God, I believe God wants us. I believe it's going to be significant, significant to us. In Colossians chapter number 3, verse 13, Paul says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. Somebody say, forgive. forgive. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. You want to make your heart feel good? Just let it go. Yeah, I know you talked about me. I know you said some stuff about me that wasn't true. I know you done it, but that's okay. It's all right. It's all right. I ain't perfect anyhow. So I'm forgetting it, and I'm going on. I'm going to go about my business. I'm not going to let that grudge. Let me tell you something. There is, there is a thing. You can have a grudge against somebody, or you can carry something in your heart, and that is a prison for you. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, you don't need to be in prison. You might say, no, pastor, it's not a prison. Oh, yes, it is a prison. That person can be in the house of God worshiping the Lord, and the first thing you do is you look over and like, I don't know why they shouting. They still they said something bad about me. I don't know. That, that's not, that ain't real. Let me tell you. You don't know if it's real or if it ain't real. Only thing we need to do is we need to let everything go. We need to put everything behind us. We need to forgive ourselves, number one, and we need to forgive others, number two. Because Christ forgave. I gotta hurry. Number three. Somebody say I need a clean slate. I don't want a clean slate. I don't want I don't want a marred up one or one that's got a bunch of stuff on it, a bunch of junk I can't do anything. Number three, I want a clean slate. Number three, I want to commit myself to restoring my relationship with God. I'm about to preach to you now. I'm going to commit myself to restoring slash renewing slash reviving my relationship with God. 
I got to say it one more time, Pastor Isaiah. I mean, this is not for you because I know your life. I want to commit myself to, yeah, well, it could fit in everybody's life. I want to commit myself to restoring, reviving, renewing my relationship with Jesus Christ. Can I preach to you for five to three minutes, two minutes on this little subject? Having, coming to church is not a relationship with God. Oh, somebody, being able to lift your hands while the worship song a team is singing, let's get it loud. It's not a relationship with Christ. Being a part of the latest ministry or the youth ministry or the men's ministry, being a part of Sunday school is not a relationship with Christ. See, many of you sitting in this room today, the only time you talk God, the only time you pray is when the man of God's praying behind the pulpit. But if you want to see your life change, in 2023, 20, then you need to renew that relationship with God. When I get up in the morning, I, I talk to Him throughout the day. Oh my God, I let the Holy Ghost come in throughout the day. I want a relationship. I said I want a relationship. See, a lot of people think talent is relationship. Oh, preacher, I can sing. I can bend the notes. I can hit the keys that's in the rafters. Or I can go the keys in the basement. I mean, nothing. I can I tell you 25 people in Nashville that live like idiots that can do that. That's not relationship. Oh, pastor... I'm here every time the door opens. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. He just hit me with this one. Hold on, hold on to your seat. Pastor, I'm there every time the door's open. I don't care if the devil's here every time the door opens. Yes, sir. You don't believe me? She's sitting right there. No. <laughs> Sorry, I'll leave you alone. <laughs> forgive me. Please forgive me. Uh, you know what I told her earlier? Now, those of you that don't know, Angela's like my baby sister that I love to torment. When we were talking about baptizing earlier, and she said, oh, I'm baptizing. And Tony said something about her need to be baptized. I said, sis, no good. You get in that water, you'll burst into flames. <laughs> uh, awesome thought. You say, preacher, I come to church. I don't care. You come to church. That's good. That's not a relationship. See, we, we, I, have, I have people, I have pastor friends that preach religion. They preach denomination. I've had that until I want to puke, and I'm sorry. If that's a little, I've had enough of that. I've had enough of that. Because I know people that, that have preached that for years and their kids are in sin and their children are in sin and they've done nothing to, 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 to bring their children to Christ. You know, somebody asked me, said, said Pastor, said, I'm so, I'm so nervous. And Caleb's fishing a tournament today. And Courtney, they were in over the weekend and somebody told me I was out, was out and about. And they said, Pastor, I want to tell you one thing. I am so proud of what you've done with your children. I'm so proud of who they are. And then I looked at them and I said, well, thank you. Because I thought, well, I'm, I'm proud of my kids too. They said, no, Pastor, you don't understand what I'm saying. I'm not talking about who their status is and what kind of money they make or what kind of... Pay. Said, said, this, this, this fellow told me, said, I'm proud to see their walk with God. Now see, all the hell that we went through for 13 years, you know what I taught my children? I taught my children it's not how you feel, it's not what you look like, it's not what your name is, but you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You don't need to have it through your daddy, you don't need to have it through your mama that's buried in the ground, but you need to have your own personal relationship with Christ. And if I can encourage you to do anything in 2023, if we want to see Hope City explode and blow up, uh, that we were, we're regretting we didn't build a seat, seat 2,500, uh, then it, it, you need to have a relationship with God. I ain't talking church. And you need to be in church. And you need to financially support church. 
You might say, preacher, well, that don't, that's scriptural. First 10%, not your leftover either. The first fruit. What do you mean, pal? I mean, if, if you make $1,000, the first $100 comes out of your check needs to go to the kingdom of God. That's scripture. He gives you 90 more to do what you want. I'm getting off that. I'm not a money preacher. I get off that. I feel it tightening up. Commit yourself to restoring, renewing, reviving your relationship with God. As they're coming to the music and I'm I'm quitting. I'm doing. I'm done. Make up your mind today. This is January 1 of 2023. What that means in the natural is whatever monies you make after today. You you have to pay taxes on for 2023. 2022 is done. Are you with me? Every it's it's a new year, a new calendar year. It's not held against you. Anything you whatever you spend today. That's why a lot of people spend more toward the end of the year to work on or help their taxes and do that. I do the same thing. We all do. It's part of it. Well, I need to I need I need to buy. If I'm going to buy a tractor, I need to wait and buy it toward the end of the year. From taxes. Make sure it works good with it. Are you with me? Some of you, you want to carry 2022 mistakes into 2023. Maybe you're here listening by Facebook or YouTube and you want to carry all that junk with you. You're scared. It. You throw it up on your back. You're packing it around, putting it in the suitcase. Well, are you sure you don't know what I did? I cannot emphasize this enough. I want you to hear me. I don't care what you did. My God is big enough to forgive you of what you've done. To cleanse you of what you've done. To heal you of what you've done. But you just have to give it to me. Now there's some of you sitting in this room today and you've not been a real bad person. I had a fellow want to argue with me last week over grades of sin. Were they fall in God's category. And actually what he was throwing up, I'm just going to hit the conversation. Actually what he was throwing up was talking about a fellow that I know that's a great preacher, but his wife left him a while back. And he was saying, well, he's disqualified. And I said, why is he disqualified? He said, because he's, if, you know, he's dead. And he's like, if he marries, he's in sin. I said, wait a minute. And I know this old boy. He was the biggest rounder that ever was when he was a young fella. I ain't even going to go into everything. And he was talking about how he was holding it against my brother or my friend. And this guy that I'm talking to is my friend. I said, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. So you're telling me God can forgive you Because you didn't have no paper saying you spent, and it's actually this fellow I'm talking about, his wife left him. He's a good man, still a good man. I said, so you're telling me, I said, just because he had that, but God forgave you. He said, but that sin's worse. Did you ever want to just slap somebody? I said, wait, 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 wait. I said, tell me this. This is how it's going. I said, if I go in, I said, is stealing a sin? He said, yeah, we stand in the covered parking lot. I said, is stealing a sin? He said, oh, yeah. I said, do you believe you go to hell for stealing? He went, yeah, yeah. 
I said, if I go in, in Kroger right now and I start loading stuff up in my pockets with the intent of stealing and I walk out the door, is it sin? He went, yeah. I said, sin causes me to go to hell. He went, yeah. I went, okay. Hold that thought. I said, if I reach in my truck and I pull that 9mm pistol out of my console right now, and I walk over and I shoot that dude right there between the eyes, that's murder. Is that a sin? He said, yeah. I said, will it send me to hell? He went, yeah. I said, question. I'm going to hell for stealing a bag of bubble gum or I'm going to hell for shooting something. If it's sin, it's sin. I'm just going to tell you what he said. I don't like you very much. <laughs> See, we want to put degrees on it. We want to make, oh, this is way up here. And this is way down here. God can forgive this, but He can't. Let me tell you, you can't do bad enough that He can't forgive you. <laughs> Some of you should have stayed up in that. Forgive yourself. Forgive those that's trespassed against you. And build your relationship with God. You're in this room. Maybe you've not done anything like that. You're still a sinner. You still need to give your heart to Christ. Stand with me around this house.